I had uh, been a research associate at the NIH with Julie Axelrod uh, right after interning, and then I came to Johns Hopkins as a psychiatry resident, and I could see the connection of doing basic research on how drugs act in the brain. Being a psychiatrist, already decided that was the kind of profession I'd like to make. I went to college in order to be a psychiatrist. I really huh. had no interest in science. I thought science was boring, memorizing textbooks was just not very much fun. And in high school, I liked reading about philosophy, uh, only that's not a fit job for a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, didn't know what to do, but in the 1950s, everybody was going into engineering because that was Eisenhower years and the build-up of the Defense Department, and I couldn't stand that sort of thing. But some friends were going to uh, be in pre-med in college, and I thought, ah, maybe I'll be a psychiatrist because I like thinking about how the brain works and, and cared about people's feelings. And I figured all I'd have to do would be somehow survive my way through the uh, biological sciences and go to medical school. So I did, and in medical school, though I didn't particularly have any a priori interest in sciences, I started working actually the summer before I started medical school at the NIH. I was going to Georgetown Medical School, and before that I went to Georgetown College. And in college, I sort of worked my way through college giving classical guitar lessons, because that was the <laughs> thing that I did best of all, play the guitar. And uh, one of my students was Donald Brown, who was in the first research associate class at the NIH, and he needed somebody to work in the lab with him uh, the summer before I started medical school. I found out that this was very different from science in textbooks and college courses. It was creative, it was uh, very artistic, it was a lot of fun, and I spent all of my elective periods in medical school and all my summers at the NIH. I was getting in interested in research, didn't have anything to do with drugs. Funny thing though, in medical school, I just fell in love with drugs. Huh. Quite independently of any research, I just liked pharmacology. I just loved drugs. I loved learning the names. I learned the brand names, the generic <laughs> names. I, I actually, the, the uh, American Medical Association had its annual convention in Washington, D.C., and medical students could wander through. And in those days, you could get drug samples for free. And I remember getting <laughs> massive numbers, big shopping bags full of drugs, and I would just look at them, and I liked the color, I just liked drugs. Didn't do anything with them, they right. just sat in the right. bag for a year. Then after interning, I was fortunate to be able to become a research associate at the NIH. I was very lucky I got a position with Julie Axelrod. I didn't participate in the match for the NIH research associate program because I only decided I'd like to do that at a later stage. And, and all the slots were filled. And lo and behold, Dr. Axelrod had an opening. Hmm. And as he said to me, he said, Slaw, you know, uh, I uh, ordinarily, all, all the people that apply here are from Harvard and <laughs> Yale, and you're only from <laughs> Georgetown, and I wouldn't really take you normally, <laughs> but I have no choice. I have this opening, and there's nobody to fill it. And uh, I've at least I knew you couldn't be too bad because you did I work across the hall from me in the lab while you were a medical student, so yep. okay. Yep. Working with Julie Axelrod was the most uh, important event in my professional life. He's a wonderful, wonderful mentor, uh, and of course one of the great scientists of the 20th century.